We have finally reached week 12 of the high school football season. Jared, that means one thing. The playoffs are officially underway. It is win or go home time as the regional quarterfinals begin. The state championship games are under a month away, setting up a wild four weeks under the lights. Football Friday night starts right now. They're coming in far and wide, filled with team spirit and hometown pride. All fired up from the big pepper rally last night. You hear the marching band playing the fight song. Teams charging the field, ready to get it on. Cheerleaders working up the crowd. Welcome to Football Friday Night on 9, presented by McCoy Federal Credit Union. I'm Alex Walker. He's Jared Oliver. Over the next half hour, we'll show you highlights from 11 regional quarterfinals. Let's start with our game of the week between Dr. Phillips and Olympia. The Titans are hosting a playoff game for the first time in 11 years. Yeah, that's a big deal, and it comes as the momentum starts to shift in this series. After losing 19 straight to DP since 2005, Olympia has won two in a row. That includes a 31-21 win earlier this season. So the Titans Titans trying to cage the Cats one more time. Let's go to the second quarter. DP up 3-0. Olympia running back Romello Ware, the workhorse for the Titans, takes it to the 7. He scored two plays later. Olympia up 6-3. Later in the quarter, the Titans looking for more, but Juan Ganius' pass goes right through the hands of Joshua Evans, so they settle for three. Rodney Wells' Panthers down just three at the half. DP fumbled the second half kickoff, but Olympia gave it right back. Check out this interception by Orlendi Laro Sillier. Right place, right time. The Panthers convert the turnover into points. 88-yard drive. Cameron Dixon goes the final 21. That gave the Panthers a 10-9 lead. Olympia answering in just three plays, all by Ware. He scored from the five, and the Titans were back in front 15-10. Still in the third, DP with another scoring drive. Amari Major. Pounds his way the final six yards to put the Panthers back in front 17-15. Then late in the fourth, Olympia driving for the game winner. But on fourth down, Ganius' pass to Xavier Tucker is short. Turnover on downs. The Panthers run out the clock and the celebration is on. Dr. Phillips takes down Olympia 17-15. Their first playoff win since 2019. Shane Whitehead joins us now from our Game of the Week. Coaches tell us all the time, Olympia head coach Travis Gabriel told me earlier this week at practice, it's tough to beat somebody twice. Dr. Phillips proved that statement to be correct tonight. The Panthers avenge a regular season loss to the Titans, and now the Panthers are moving on in the playoffs. Definitely tough to beat somebody twice. We've been on the both ends of those sticks in the past few years. Um, it's just great to be back in advance in the playoff. Uh, these seniors have been through so much not making the playoffs in the last couple of uh, years. I think one last year, they might have been ninth, and the year before, they might have been 10 out of 8. And uh, those guys worked. They were committed to each other, committed to the program, and they wanted to be here. It's been a while, but DP's moving on. DP moving on. And we know how to coach in the playoffs. Uh, some of these guys know how to play in the playoffs, the guys that played uh, freshman year. So uh, to survive one at a time. The best season in Olympia football history comes to an end. The Titans finish 8-3. Dr. Phillips moves on to take on Plant in the regional semifinals. At Olympia High School, Shane Whitehead football, Friday night on 9. Thank you, Shane. Well, the Boone Braves won their district. Lake Mary did not. And despite the Rams having the better overall record and the number one seed, they had to travel to Boone tonight. The last time these two met was back in 2008. Boone won that game 26-7, by the way. A win tonight will advance either team to the 4M Regional Semifinals. Boone, a big underdog tonight, but the Braves, they came to play. Sophomore quarterback Sam Johnson throws to the speedster Isaiah Mizell. A 59-yard strike, and just like that, Boone on the board, 7-0. Ensuing Lake Mary possession. Rams quarterback Noah Grubbs, looking for his first completion, turns into a 49-yard connection to Caden Harshberger. Rams level with the score at 7. 
And then a couple drives later, Boone back in Lake Mary territory. The junior running back, Daniel Smith, gets loose. Nobody's going to tackle him. Boone back in front by seven. But Boone's defense gets a turnover and took over with great field position. Speed kills, and Mizell had a step. Catches it. Ball comes out, but the refs say he had a possession long enough to call it a touchdown. Braves go up by two scores. Boone was up 24-7 late in the second quarter, but Lake Mary, they only need 36 seconds to score. Grubbs throws to Carson Henshaw. He's got it. Quick strike from the Rams. Braves led 24-14 at the half, but Lake Mary comes back in the second half to win in a shootout. 42-38, a great effort from Boone. Lake Mary advances to the regional semifinals. So Lake Mary will play the winner of this one, undefeated Winter Park at home tonight against 7-3 Mandarin out of Jacksonville. Mandarin won a regional semifinal against the Wildcats back in 2018. First possession for the Mustangs, direct snap to Ty and Weich, and gets around the corner and scores. 6-0 Mandarin. And they go for two and check this out. It looks like Antoine Belgrave shorter is stopped, but he spins right out of the tackle and reaches over for the goal line. A successful try, 8-0 Mandarin. Later in the first, it's Mandarin quarterback Tramel Jones escaping the pocket, puts a move on several defenders, and is able to get to the goal line for the score. 16-0 Mustangs after another successful two-point conversion. It's now 22-zip Mandarin. When Winter Park gets on the board, Joseph Goho gets the short touchdown run into the pile. 22-8 at that point, and Winter Park couldn't get any closer than that. Mandarin wins 29 to 16. So in the 4M bracket, the stage is set next week in the regional semifinals between number five Mandarin and number one Lake Mary. One thing's for certain in the high school football playoffs, never cannot a pop up. The Blue Daughters have advanced the state title game each of the past two seasons. So despite a seven and three record, they still know what it takes to win when it matters. I caught up with former Apopka star, the Kai Martinez, who now plays for UCF. He had a message for his guys before tonight's game. Always gonna be a Blue Daughter. I, I, I talked to some of them still. I, my little brother plays. I'm still trying to be that big brother role for the players on the team and Apopka just telling them to keep their head up. And the culture we have at Apopka is, is different from other schools. It's never going to change. The culture is a winning culture. Apopka, the three seed in 4M Region 1. The Blue Daughters hosting the six seed Evans. The Blue Daughters special teams making things happen. Antoine Robinson blocks the Evans punt. They score, go for two, and get it. Yeah, celebrate that touchdown, man. Evans answering right back. Chris Peterson, the quarterback, he's got the edge. What a score there. Cuts the lead to 8-7. Tough sledding for both offenses in the first half. Credit the defenses, but things start to open up down the stretch. Tyson Davidson, 15-yard touchdown. Blue Daughters lead 15-7. Man, that Peterson kid for Evans is tough. He's going to call his own number again, and this time scores from 30 yards out. Two-point conversion, no good, though. Apopka still up 15-13. Under five to play in the game, Jaden Safford right on the goal line. 22-13 Blue Daughters, and they win by that final. So a popka to the regional semis, where they'll face the winner of this one, Seminole, in Haggerty. The Knolls kick things off, and the Huskies make a huge mistake from the get-go. Jacob Donovan's going to cough it up. Nakoma Simpson forcing that fumble. Corey Smith recovers. Very next play, Carson Securios Lasky, he takes a shot, finds his guy Michael Key, unlocks the touchdown, 7 0 Knowles. Next seminal drive, more of the same on offense. Securios Lasky, buying time, rolling. Another deep shot, that's Justin Rosado. Watch this. Knowles just surfing through the first quarter. This game never in doubt, guys. Rodney Grant gets his number called. He's got a big hole. He said, it's too easy, bro. Seminole dominant tonight. 42-3, your final score. So the Knolls get another date with a popka in the 4M Region 1 semis. Seminole beat the Darters 21-3 back in late September. That game will take place at Seminole High School. In the 3M bracket, the Jones Fighting Tigers were on the road tonight to play the Avito Lions. Both of these offenses more than capable of lighting up the scoreboard, picking things up in the second quarter. Jones up 7-0 on offense at midfield. Hand off to Dante Wallace. And thanks to some great blocking, the sophomore hits the open field. Plenty of speed. Jones takes a 14-0 lead. Ensuing Oviedo possession. 
Jackson Latour throws high to Christian Robbins, and it's Braden Olsen taking advantage of the mistake. Huge return puts the Tigers offense back in action inside the red zone. And later on, first and goal. Direct snap to Jerry and Parker, and the senior running back scores. Jones up 20 to nothing. Lions defense trying to keep the lead from getting worse. Joey Gioa forces a strip sack, and Aiden Mahaffey recovers the loose ball, giving Avito some new life. Two plays later, Latour taking a shot to the end zone in double coverage. Marquette Williams somehow makes the catch. Touchdown Lions. They cut the lead to 13 with less than a minute to go in the first half. And Trevor Jackson's pass over the middle completes to Jacquez Varner. Keeps his balance before turning up field. The Lions finally able to bring him down inside the 10 yard line. Jones quiets the roar and beats Oviedo 33 to 7 to advance. Edgewater is the number one seed in 3M Region 1. The undefeated Eagles hosting First Coast out of Jacksonville. The Buccaneers marching down the field on their opening drive until this. Yikes. Rodney Tisdale can't handle the snap. There's Jaden Alexander Felton with the recovery. So here come the Eagles on their first drive on third and 16. Michael Clayton to Christian Willis. Move those chains and that sets up this. Samaj Fleming, direct snap. This kid is so tough. Lays the lumber. Edgewater up seven zip after one. Let's go to the second. Edgewater makes it a two score game. Fleming second touchdown of the night. 14-0 Eagles, they cruise 37-0. Edgewater head coach Cameron Duke now 7-0 in first round games. So that sets up a rivalry game in the regional semis. Edgewater will host Jones next Friday. The Eagles hammer the Tigers 31-14 back in week four. We are just getting started here on football Friday night on nine. Seven games down, four to go as our coverage of the regional quarterfinals continues. Our first stop after the break takes us to DeLand as the 8-2 Bulldogs begin their playoff run against Spruce Creek. And that winner will face either New Smyrna Beach or Orange City University. The Titans only loss of the season coming to DeLand. In the 2 West bracket, Palm Bay traveled to Titusville tonight. The Terriers entering the playoffs with only a loss on the season. And in College Park, Ed White out of Jacksonville traveled to Bishop Moore tonight for a 2M playoff showdown. Can't wait for those, but before we go back to the field, it is time for our first Sonic Battle of the Bands. Here's the Boone High School Marching Band. <laughs> Welcome back to Football Friday Night on 9, presented by McCoy Federal Credit Union. In 4S Region 3, Treasure Coast out of Port St. Lucie is the team to beat as the number one seed. But there are plenty of contenders in that bracket, including the two seed Orange City University and the three seed DeLand. Tonight, the 8-2 and two Bulldogs hosting Spruce Creek in a regional quarterfinal. DeLand beat Spruce Creek 28-27 in a thriller on the road in late September. We start in the third quarter. DeLand down 10-7. Javon Ross, this dude is special 45 yard house call the Bulldogs retake the lead 14 10 Deland's defense with a huge play here to get some breathing room check this out Spruce Creek fumbles there's Ross on the other side of the ball he makes it 21 10 dogs Luke Smith looking to answer right back look who picks it off it's Javon Ross again and he's got plenty of room before getting dragged out Look, feed that man. He's a one-man machine. Ross with the touchdown. He's the MVP of the night as DeLand gets it done by 10, 35-25. So, DeLand advances to face the winner of this one, the two-seed Orange City University hosting New Smyrna Beach. First quarter, the Titans get on the scoreboard on second and goal. Malachi Walters to Barrett Scholes. Great catch, 7-0. Still in the first, Titans in the red zone on the 15, Walters striking to Isaiah Baker, 14-0 University. It would get worse for the Barracuda defense. Walters with the hat trick to Jermaine Hayes, 21 zip. What's up, man? Titans pitch the shutout, 42 zip. New Smyrna Beach with five turnovers. So that sets up a 4S Region 3 semi between Orange City University and DeLand for the right to play in the regional final. The Dogs handed the Titans their only loss of the season, 14-3 back in October. Should be a good one, Alex. Well, the 91 Titusville Terriers were at home for a 2S opening round playoff game against 7-3 and 
Palm Bay. It's been so many years since the Terriers have hosted a playoff game that no one seems to remember the last game when it occurred. Titusville leading three to nothing with about three minutes left in the first half. The Terriers are backed up deep and in, in punt formation. The snap sails over the head of Dean Roberts. He goes for the football, loses it. Jake Day comes out with the football and a touchdown, but the officials ruled that Roberts actually was throwing a pass. It's ruled intentional grounding, and Palm Bay gets the football, and the Terriers on the one-yard line. Braden Cook takes it from the one-yard out. Palm Bay up 7-3 at the half. Palm Bay mounting a drive early in the third quarter. Palm Bay fumbles, and Dwight Jenkins is credited with the recovery. Eight plays after the fumble, Nate Lopez finds a way through traffic and drives in the end zone from eight yards out. Titusville wins a defensive slugfest 13-7. The Terriers visit two-seed South Sumter next. Checking out the Brevard County scoreboard, the defending state champs from Coco blow past Eustace 54 to 7. The top seeded Tigers will host Danellen in the regional semis. O'Galley puts up 62 on Merritt Island and wins by 40. The Commodores host three seed Sebring next Friday night. In 2M Region 1, the district champs from Bishop Moore opening their playoff run against Ed White out of Jacksonville. Up 21 0, the Hornets sting again. Bjorn Jurgensen up top to Nolan Monroe. Bishop Moore cruising up 28-0. Right before the end of the first half, Jurgensen gets a bit greedy. He's going to get picked off by Joshua Patterson. He's got blockers, plenty of room to rumble, finally gets dragged down deep in Bishop Moore territory. So with seven seconds for halftime, Jalen Petway looking end zone. Trenton Gumber says no fly zone. Petway would get one final shot, and that Hornets defense stands strong. Great play from Jake Conti. Bishop Moore wins 42-22. They'll travel to Riverside next Friday. Checking out other scores from tonight's quarterfinals. Lake Mineola, winners over Haines City, 35-16 to advance. And in 3S Region 3, Mainland Hammers Satellite 62 to nothing. The Bucks will host Rockledge next week. The Raiders beat Jensen Beach 19-16 in overtime. So that does it for the opening round of the FHSAA playoffs. As that postseason rolls along, the Sunshine State Athletic Association is already staging state title games. Tomorrow night in Lakeland, Oviedo's Masters Academy will take on Westminster Academy at a Fort Lauderdale in the title game. The Eagles are 8-2 under first-year head coach Garrett Kruzek. Garrett is the son of former UCF head coach Mike Kruzek. Mike is their offensive coordinator. The Masters Academy offense has scored 41 or more points in seven of their 10 games. Westminster Academy is 9-1, and their defense has given up no more than 20 points in a single game. So it sounds like strength on strength tomorrow night for a championship trophy. It would mean a lot to the program, uh, especially coming off of, you know, a 5-4 and four record last year. And in our, just in our first uh, year here, eight months, the guys have followed the vision uh, and followed that path, and it, it took them right to this game, and now we just got to execute. And best of luck to the Masters Academy as they chase the state title tomorrow night. Absolutely. Well, hey, look, still plenty to come here on Football Friday night, including a look at our top plays of the week. We'll show you the best of the best from the first week of the playoffs in just a few minutes. Yeah, a lot of great plays, but first, our sonic battle of the bands continues. Here's the Lake Mary High School Band. Enjoy. <laughs> Welcome back to Football Friday Night presented by McCoy Federal Credit Union. It is now time for our Plays of the Week, and we start with play number one from our Game of the Week. Dr. Phillips Olympia, DP defensive back Orlendi Laro Cillier, right place, right time, and the Panthers win our Game of the Week 17-15. Play number two comes from Lake Marion Boone. Sophomore quarterback Sam Johnson finds Isaiah Mizell. He does the rest. 59-yard strike. Lake Mary does win 42-38. And our third and final play coming from Bishop Moore. Ed White out of Jacksonville up 21-0. Hornets sting the Commanders. Bjorn Jurgensen up to Nolan Monroe. And they win it. And they advance to the regional semifinals. And now our final Sonic Battle of the Bands. Here's the University High School Band taking the field. Enjoy. <laughs> 